rejoice and be glad in it. Um, TGIF, thank God that it's Friday. We are so grateful to God who continuously looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? God's name is worthy to be praised. As usual, I'm delighted to greet you in the master's and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Um, a couple of notices and announcements <clears throat> that I want to share with you. Um, first of all, please plan now to join us for our worship experience on Sunday. Worship experience starts at 1045. I have a word that the Lord has placed on my heart um, for tomorrow, for Sunday rather. You don't want to miss this word. I want to talk about as the Lord shall guide, the danger of false teachings, the danger of false teachings. You want to hear that word so that it can help us to negotiate these difficult times in which we find ourselves. Also, I'm so sad to learn, and let me just share with you, I received this message um, actually last night. This wonderful um, woman who visited us all the time in our services, um, not a member of our church, actually a member of the Bethany Church, but a friend of Salem. Her name is Janet Small, and unfortunately, God called her from labor to reward. Her service is going to be at the Bethany Baptist Church on the 27th, on the 27th, which is Monday, on this Monday at 10 o'clock. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I said the 27th. I thought somebody told me it was this Monday. Well, let me just check that. Let me see what day the 27th is. Yeah, okay, so it's so on Monday the 27th. Um, I believe that is correct information. So that's a week from this, from the Monday coming. And that service is gonna be at 10 o'clock at the Bethany Church. And um, we certainly wanna go and give our support and our concern. Now, you want to join us. We're having a homecoming barbecue sponsored by a Women's Day Committee, and that is going to be on Saturday, September the 25th, the, the, the Saturday before our homecoming. You want to be there. We're going to have barbecue ribs, jerk pork, barbecue chicken, pulled pork, fish, rasta pasta, corn, potato salad, green salad, baked beans, cake, brownies, punch, and so much more. What we're attempting to do is come together and do what Paul calls koinonia, to fellowship. So join us on Saturday, September the 25th. We're asking for a donation of only $20. You'll be able to have more than enough to eat, but also to engage and to interact with your friends and family, bring somebody with you. We'll have social distancing. We'll be in the parking lot. We pray for wonderful weather. I hope that you will do that. This is our homecoming barbecue that is going to be sponsored, um, is being sponsored by the Women's Day Committee. And then our annual Women's Day will be on Sunday, um, October the 10th, the second Sunday. October the 10th will be our annual Women's Day. I have a wonderful young lady preacher, the Reverend Tisha Dixon Williams. She's a wonderful preacher on the circuit, preaching up a storm everywhere, and she has agreed to come. I've told her about us. You want to be here for that service. Then, of course, you don't want to miss our homecoming Sunday, which will follow our homecoming barbecue on the 25th. But then on that Sunday is the 26th. We're inviting everybody to come back home. Come and join us. And let's just thank God for all that God has done. Well, let's go to the word that the Lord has given us for today. Um, we want to continue in the epistle of John, in the epistle of John, right? We, we talked yesterday, we did um, John chapter one, and today we're in John chapter two. We actually concluded with the first verse of chapter two on yesterday, where John writes, and John is... The, the first epistle of John, Old Folk called it I, John, is all about love. He says about the fact that the greatest force and strength in the world is love. When we love one another, we have light. When we love one another, we have joy. When we love one another, we have peace. When we love one another, we don't have anxiety. And so that is what John, um, he's an old man now. 
and he's just given words of wisdom. And so he always writes, my dear children, here it is. First John chapter two, verse one, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. And then we concluded that yesterday. Today, we want to pick up at verse three. He says, um, love one another. And this is how we know that we love. He says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. So if you love God, then you do what God commands us to do. And God is our GPS system. I heard Jesus say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Jesus loved everybody. He healed the sick, opened up blinded eyes, fed the hungry, even raised the dead, was concerned about the least of these. I was being interviewed by my good friend, the Reverend Larry Camp, and he asked, what is your position about social justice? I said, you cannot really be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ and not be concerned about social justice. Social justice deals with the fact that we want the hungry to be fed. We want the homeless to have a place to stay. We want medical care for everybody. We want those that are disenfranchised to know that there's somebody because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting friend, but should have everlasting life. He writes again, dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one you have heard since the beginning. The old command is the message you have heard. Yet I'm writing you a new command its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already coming. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in darkness. You cannot walk in the light and mistreat your brothers and sisters. Anyone who loves their brother and sisters lives in the light and there's nothing in them to make them stumble. So if you wanna be in the light, you gotta love everybody. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in darkness and walks around in darkness. They do not know where they're going because the darkness has blinded them. And let me tell you, when you hold hate and malice and envy, in your heart, it blinds you from the things of God. I close now. He says, I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you the word of God. If it does, you will remain in the son and in the father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. Sounds like the same thing that he said he, over and over again in John three sixteen in the gospel for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. To whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for Christ came not into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, 
the anointing you receive from him remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you because you already know these things. But as his anointing teaches you about the things, about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Jesus put it this way. You got to stay connected to the vine. And that's what Jesus reminds us um, in the Gospels, that if you remain, and that is also found in the epistles of John, in the Gospel of John, that if you remain in the vine, you will be able to have life. Ye are the branches. I am the vine. If you remain in me, you have life. But without me, you can do nothing. But with me and through me, all things are possible. And so as we walk with God through Jesus Christ, we walk in the light. We love our brothers and our sisters. And people know that we are Christian, not by what we say, not by how we look, but they know that we're Christians by our love. God bless you. The grass wither and the flower fader, for the word of our God shall stand forever. Let me just go ahead and greet some of you now. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm glad to see you today on this Friday. Good afternoon, Sister Ramsey. Angela, how are you? Hope you're feeling better. Sister Virginia Chania, Sister Jacqueline Wallace, thank you. God bless you and your family and have a peaceful weekend. Thank you so much. My Veda, how are you? Marva Harding Clark, how are you? Monica Stewart, how are you? Valerie Ellis, Ovo Hines, how are you? Virginia, Virginia, how are you? Valerie, good to see you. Miss Mary Lawrence, thank you so much. When are you coming back? Are you back? My better drum girl, how are you? Leroy, thank you. Thank you for stopping in the office today to hang out with me. Sister Emma Jean Brown, you continue to have our prayers. Sister Brenda Allen, how are you? Good to see all of you. Let's go to Lord in prayer and we'll be on our way. I wish for each of you a wonderful and marvelous weekend. Know that there's nothing that can happen to you that you together with God cannot handle. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you that as our forefathers and mothers would say that the blood was still running warm in our veins and we were clothed in our right mind. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Now, God bless everyone under the sound of my voice. You know every problem, every concern, every heartache, and every teardrop. We hear your word that says that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Remember Sister Janet Small's family this morning as they have lost their mother, their friend. Oh God, grant them your comfort. Make real the words of the psalmist. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Oh God, continue to keep us in your care. Help us to love one another. For we heard Jesus say, a new commandment I give you, that ye love one another. Help us to let our light so shine that others might see our good works and you alone might get the glory. Now continue to keep us in this pandemic season. In the words of Mahalia Jackson, we thank you for how you brought us. We thank you for how you kept us. We thank you that you never left us. Hear our prayer now. Incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good weekend. Even though it's cloudy outside, it's not raining, go and just take a deep breath. Thank God for life. Hear David in Psalm 150. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Sister Angela Kelly, we're praying for you. I did get your note. Um, I'm praying for you. I hope that you are doing well. She had a procedure this morning. She's on her way from the doctor. And But we know that Jesus is the real healer because he got more healing in him as garment than all the hospitals in all the world. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. And you're down sitting and then you're uprising. Till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ. To whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Look to see you on Sunday.